Today I'm going to show you another method of combining 3D modeled and rendered elements with a photograph for a believable result. Um, but first of all, something that, uh, that probably is overdue to be shown here is how to bring one object, uh, an object from another Blender file into your current file. So here I have my model of Hugo, who is the golem from the Fablehaven book series that I've read to my kids and they loved it and I, I was kind of inspired at one point and I, anyway, I modeled what I think Hugo looks like. But for this scene, I kind of want Hugo to have a little robot buddy. So I've modeled another robot, it's in another Blender file, I did it in a, at a different time. But I'm going to bring that robot in here to kind of play against Hugo in the scene here. So all I have to do is go to the File menu and click on Append. And then I can browse over to my robot file, robot007. And I have all of the parts of that robot all by themselves isolated in one collection called Robot. You can just browse these Blender files as though they're just a folder. So I'm going to double click on this collection, Robot and you can see that now I have a collection called robot in this blend file and I'm going to move that robot around just kind of bring him in here let's get his feet set on the ground so that he's on the same ground level as Hugo the golem and let's have him face the camera a little bit better we'll just put those two kind of next to each other just like that. I think that's good. Okay, so that's how you bring another object in. Um, or in this instance, a collection of objects. So the next thing I'm going to do since we're dealing with photographs here is I'm going to place a photograph into my the background of my camera view so that I can kind of compare, I can, I can sort of line things up. Now it's important to remember, you probably noticed this in the last tutorial, but it's important to remember that placing a photograph into the background of your camera view with this little checkbox down here does not add it to your render. It's just basically for reference. It's, it's for lining things up for informational purposes only really. So I'm going to open my images and I've got this backgrounds folder that I keep and I've got a shot that I took in Death Valley. I'm going to double click on that and bring it in and right away that actually looks pretty good. This is on the playa in Death Valley but it is squashed vertically. Um, so I need to open up this images properties and I can see that it's 5,472 pixels wide by 3648 tall. So 5472 by 3648. I'm going to go to my rendering output and I'm going to put those numbers in. 3648, I think it was 5472 tall, wasn't it? Let's double check. 5472, 3648. Yep, that's correct. Okay, so now I have kind of a background here and I can sort of adjust my camera. I can hit shift tilde. You can see I've kind of got a, a grid here that allows me to compare the lines of perspective in my scene with the lines on the ground. And I can shift tilde and kind of line those up a little better until I feel like those lines really match what I'm seeing on the ground and it's not going to be perfect here I'm just eyeballing it um, but usually you can get fairly close so I'm gonna say that's probably pretty good right there and of course now I need to match the light and I need to add a shadow catcher so I've got a lamp in here it's already set to be a sun lamp which is going to be a good match for a clear blue sky day in Death Valley um, and actually even the angle is pretty good probably needs to be even a little higher overhead again with a sun lamp the position like well, you can move it around all you want but the position doesn't matter it's just the angle I happen to know that I was facing I think roughly north I, I should say I, I think I know that I was facing north ish in this photograph 
and I'm in the northern hemisphere, the, so the sun will always be a little bit in the south, probably, uh, during, you know, the middle of the day. So I'm going to just kind of face it like that and see how that looks on my characters. I think that looks, let's look at a rendered view here. I think that looks pretty good. There's no reflected light coming from underneath them like there would be in real life because again, this image, this light colored ground that would normally be bouncing light back up in, it's not really there in my scene. It's just a background image in my camera for reference only. So let's fix that. Um, we're going to put in a shadow catcher to catch shadows and also another thing a shadow catcher does is it bounces light back and that's an important thing to know in a minute. You'll see why. So I'm going to place a plane in here. Just click mesh and plane and I'm going to go into a orthographic viewport here and just kind of place this right under Hugo's feet there. And then I'm going to scale this up about 50 times. Nice and big. And you know what, now that I've done that, I might even adjust my camera's position a little more. Because I can tell that that vanishing point on the plane was way too high. That's probably a little better. Okay, and you can see now that Hugo and my robot have more light bouncing up into them than they had before. We can um, we can turn that plane off and on and you can see how the shadows deepen underneath when the plane is absent. It's reflecting light, but it's reflecting the wrong color of light. Um, it's reflecting back, you know, a, a pure bright white light, whereas the ground surface of this playa is kind of a, a dark beige. Um, and even after I turn this plane into a shadow catcher, that reflected light color will persist. So I need to give this plane a material. And I can do a couple of things here. I can just add a new material and call this ground. And if I want, I can just open up an image editor here. Oh, there's a there's a spoiler alert. I've tried this before. Um, I can open up an image editor here and open up my Death Valley image so that I don't have the 50% opacity and fading that you get with a background image. And I'm just going to sample this color. So maybe right there. And now the reflected light that bounces up in here and the reflections themselves are more of a realistic color. I think I'm going to darken this just a little bit though because I think I sampled a fairly light colored pixel. I'm just going to try to manually match that with my eyes a little. Now, no, what I'll do is I'll zoom in and I'm going to sample a different color. Let's, let's sample this guy there. That's probably good. Okay, so we've got our reflected light happening now. I can close down this window over here. And I'm going to turn this image into a shadow catcher. And one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to uncheck this transparent checkbox so you can see what happens when that's not checked because this is not a default option. I'm just remembering that I had that I had that turned on. But so I'm going to go into my object properties here for the plane and scroll all the way down to visibility. We just twirl this visibility uh, menu down and check shadow catcher and this thing immediately turns into a shadow catcher and the reason that doesn't look like anything helpful right now is because of that visibility checkbox that I just um, turned back on you've got to have or sorry visibility that transparent checkbox that I just turned back off a minute ago so under film in your render properties under film you've got this checkbox for transparency and that is what keeps or that allows your shadow check shadow catcher to work um, because your shadow catcher really just kind of punches a hole through things into transparency well into whatever the background is um, and in this case we want our background to be transparent so that the shadow catcher appears transparent 
Okay, and now we're casting a shadow onto the playa. In my opinion, I don't think these shadows are hard enough, so I'm going to select my sun lamp, and I'm going to change the angle down to maybe about three or four, and that's hardening the shadows a little bit. Maybe we'll harden them a little bit more, 2.5. Let's try that out. Okay, and um, we're almost ready to render but I want to make a couple of changes first first uh, and then we've got to go visit the compositor so let's go back to our render output settings first of all this is really huge 5472 pixels by 3648 so I'm going to say let's render like 30 percent of that size just to save time in our tutorial you know maybe a client will want that kind of resolution for output but um, we don't need it right now Secondly, we've got to make sure that this image is going to actually show up in our compositor, um, in, our, in our finished composited image, which um, right now it's not. Let's go to our compositing layout, and this is by default what we'd have here. So we're going to add an input and image node, and under that image I'm going to open my deathvalley1.jpg. Okay, so there, there's our image that we're going to use. And secondly, we are going to add under converter, sorry, under color, an alpha over node. And we're going to check that, or we're going to just drop it on that noodle there. That automatically plugs our image output from our render, la render layers into the top image input on the alpha over node but I'm going to plug it into the bottom one um, and then I'm going to plug my image into the top Im image output into the top image input what that does basically remember how we checked that transparent film box over here and there it is uh, that gives us a transparent background when we render and it also um, takes the alpha channels and places them or places everything that's opaque over the top of whatever goes into this input so that gives us our our alpha channels now we've got one other problem here um, our image this is still 5472 pixels wide which is not going to composite properly into something that is about 30 percent that size remember how we shrunk our render size down so um, what I'm going to do is add one more node here and that's going to be under distort and scale and I'm going to drop that in here and instead of a relative scale I'm just gonna say you know what scale to the render size and that will do it automatically okay so now if I render you can see that our compositor places everything together the way it should and our image background is scaled properly here okay and that looks pretty good um, I'm gonna show you one other quick trick um, in ca just in case you want to deal with the situation a little differently um, so let's close our render out here and go back to our default layout um, actually and let's unplug all this stuff from our compositor We'll just unplug these and plug in our normal, our render layer output into our composite. Let's go back to our default. We can get rid of our background image. And in this instance, I'm going to just bring in an HDRI image uh, for a background. So Greg Zoll, um, most of you probably know this already, but he runs uh, this website polyhaven.com and he's very very generously given uh, CC0 access to hundreds if not thousands of HDRI high resolution high quality HDRI images so I've downloaded a few of those over the years and I've got one that I think will look really good here I still have my uh, shadow catcher playing here that's important to note and 
instead of a background image, I'm just going to choose an HDRI image. So for my color, under my world settings here, world properties, I'm going to click my little color input node here, and I'm going to choose an environment texture. And I'm going to choose this autumn crossing. Let's just go 8K for now, so it's a little easier. And in this instance, I'm actually going to have this behave a little differently. So I don't want my transparent film. I want to actually see the background here. And I'm going to delete my sun lamp, or at least I'm going to tell it not to render and I don't want to see it. Um, so that's going to give me kind of this woodsy background here. And from my camera view, that's going to look pretty nice once I render it. So let's have a look at that. Okay, and one of the nice things about this approach is that if you've got reflective elements like we have in the little shine, uh, worn spots on this robot, they'll actually reflect the proper surroundings. They'll be reflecting this HDRI image because it's a 360 degree panorama in every axis. Uh, and our shadow catcher, this is very diffused light, so what our shadow catcher is doing for us is not as explicit but it still gives a sense of grounding and presence and makes us feel like these objects are included in the image there. So that's a really nice way to add a background or, or a, f a photographic element to a rendering. I hope this helps and have a great day.